Welcome back. Do you know, I had a feeling you might rejoin us. It's a real fun night here. Next 24 minutes is going to fly by just like the first half did with more Jack Charlton and memories, funny stories, dressing room rows, you name it, based around the book. Jack Charlton, the authorised biography. Uh, Colin Young, the author of that, is with us. And so is Mel Sternum, one of Jack's players, of course, at Sheffield Wednesday, and uh, who also uh, played with some distinction for a team just up the M1 as well. Leeds United. James Gregg uh, joins us as well for a roundup of everything else. Uh, I'm not going to mention this one more time on the show that you're, you know, you've got a day off from switching on Christmas lights. lights. Yeah, I've Absolutely. just put mine up at home. I just need somebody to come and. Talk I'll me. gladly come round, but it is, it is for a fee. Yeah. Are you yeah. Like, oh, right, right. It's only a small fee. <laughs> Rules you out, then, mate. Rules you out. <laughs> I did promise before we do the roundup. I did promise before the break. Flying pig. Did you know, Colin? Uh, because you're based in the northeast, you knew about this nickname yeah, that I he's got. Have, but the other one he had was Zico, but Zico's not quite right. <laughs> just, that doesn't, that's not right. The flame really? pig's better, is it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> well, Tell me how he got it. Well, what it was is I'm off the Manor Estate, right? I've yeah. got five, there was nine of us in our family and we never, ever saw waste on food. It always got air calling. Nothing got wasted. So we've gone down to QPR on a Friday and we've all, we're all having a meal as you do, pretty yeah. much meal. And, I think it was Gary Shelton or Mega, somebody left some food on the plate and my eyes lit up. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I'm having that. Yeah. So I just went over to pick the food up and as I did that, Jack looked across and said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm having that, I'm not leaving it. He says, D do you know you? He says, you're like flying pig. Yeah. And I just I, looked at him and went, flying pig, why flying pig? He says, because you just eat everything. You're just like yeah. a pig. He says, and we're going to call you flying pig from now on. And that's how it, it, that's how it come but, about. Yeah, but well, that was a private like remark to you. How did that then get out into the wider world? And did you? I, I did think he... it might have been one of you. It could have been. Uh, one of you, that's been. who it might have been. Hello, <laughs> one of you. The enemy. <laughs> the, the enemy, enemy. Uh, might, have uh, might, have been, might even be me, you know, heard about it, it and just put it out. Either you or oh. Paul Thompson. One of them. One of the two, yeah. Not too got, I got, enjoyed it. Got our cards marked there. Yeah, I yeah, have. yeah. Ah, yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's right. tense here, I, I tell you, I wouldn't want the flying pig coming sight. No, oh, you, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Tell you right about that. No, you I wouldn't. certainly <laughs> wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, you hit players with fair old force, didn't you? I used to love I, it. You I used to love it, but now you can't touch it. Now. It's a non-contact sport now. Um, I wouldn't be playing. You know, I'd be sent off all the time. So, but, it's uh, not quite. We were talking during the break about Sam Hutchinson. He's a throwback midfield player, Sheffield Wednesday. Great player, but <laughs> he's got something loose. You know, he, he just well, I'm not sure. he sees something he's, and he just goes for it. But he's, get, he's he's just about on the right side of the law at the minute, and he's just getting those tackles in. I wish for a lot more tackles. What went in, Alan? Yeah, I do. That the game was like it used to yeah, be. Yeah, it is. We like run about. You know, with Jack. You know, going back boozing and that. Mm. And we used to do that every time. You know, we used to go out after a game and get absolutely bladdered. Yeah. You know, before a game, Sunday. So I don't know about before games. Some of them might have, but you know, on, on the Sunday, you know, we used to recover, go in Monday and train. Tuesday, go out, yeah. have a few beers. Wednesday off, Thursday train, Friday train, play Saturday. Mm. You know, and that's that's how it was then days. Mm. You know, now you know, obviously they're in the they're, they're in the limelight, uh, uh, very very. Yeah, lots of them. Even the low and, down and players, they, aren't they? And yeah. they yeah. get caught with a pint. They don't. They don't do it now. They've got dietitians now. Got, yeah, I can see you have. <laughs> well, to be honest, to be honest, I'm getting fit have. again. I'm, I'm making a comeback, Alan. Yeah, I'm looking forward I, to it. Really looking forward to it. Stopping drinking at Christmas. I don't know what Christmas, but I'm stopping, <laughs> but I'm stopping at Christmas. Give, <laughs> he won't give the year. <laughs> Excellent. I, I'm talking about drinking. There's a, there's, a, there's a great tale in there about, was it Chris Waddle talking about it? It was on an island trip where the boys ran out of cash <coughs> for the bar. Yeah. And approached Jack. And go, oh, you, te you tell it. It was, uh, it was when he was Newcastle manager. He was, only, he was only actually there for a year. But he had uh, arranged a trip to, I think it was... My pay was it? It was certainly Spain. Took Pat and Sissy as his, his mother. I might add they, they all went because uh, they, they had a place out there. So um, I think they went to watch a Valencia match. Did a whole few days, and then as you say, the sort of two or three days in, and the lads have have started to run out of cash. So um, Chris Waddle was sort of sent as the as the um, 
you know, the opening <laughs> gambit. The he's opening a, he's a young, he was a young the kid then, though, was No, he was, I mean, he, he would have been, no, he wasn't that young. He, he was, it was the year he moved to Tottenham. So oh. he was fairly well yeah. established, to be fair, and he'd had that year with Keegan and so on. So he was, and with him being a sort of fella Geordie, I think they thought, you know, if anybody's going to get any money out of yeah. And he was a fair player as well, decent he could, player. He, he could put a turn on, could I, I believe, and yeah. he, he might have done so down here on a couple of occasions, from, <laughs> from what I've heard. Many um, yeah. Yeah. But he, he basically approached Jack in the bar, and, and sure enough, sort of eventually the conversation got round to, can I have a sub, can I borrow some money? Um, and Jack took off his flat cap at the bar where he was having his coffee and pulls out sort of 50 Notes. quid. And yeah. all the players are, you know, around the corner watching yeah. this yeah. and of course Waddle comes back and, yeah, I've done it, I've done it. So yeah. then there's a whole trail of them that eventually started taking it in turns. <laughs> and, so he, then, he, he did that customarily? He put cash he had under cash, his cap? He had cash underneath his cap. Yeah, it was quite a common, common way for him to carry his mm. cash. On the rare events that he was allowed to carry cash by Pat, I might add, because she yeah. would she would be the one who decided how much she went and if he actually she? went at all. She wore the trousers. Me, yeah, very much so. And as Mel will know, she's a wonderful, <laughs> lovely, lovely lady, but she has kept him in check from pretty much 1957 onwards. Well, he owes me oh, 40 quid, Jack. Yeah. So I'm going to ask Pat so, uh, for 40 quid. I'd ask yeah. Pat, yeah. You uh, still won't yeah. get it, but you I, can I, ask I, I won't get it, and I won't get it. That was for a game of cards. But Jack didn't, within Ireland, Jack didn't need any cash, did he? He certainly didn't need a checkbook. Nobody had taken any cash off him. He was that popular. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there is this, this, uh, the, the fallacy of this um, going into a, a bar and, and signing the cheque and it was never cashed. I mean, that's a, actually a Stanley Matthews story. It's not a Jack story, but right. it, it is a story that you hear a lot in Ireland. Yeah. But I can confirm, as, as I've been written his book, it is not true definitely okay. not true right. but it, it originates Never. as a Stanley Matthews story from around the Stoke area and I think <coughs> it's just one of those things that has followed Jack around Never what is the undoubtedly facts. the case though is Never that the facts get in the way no exactly. I know I was, was a bit disappointed but yeah. I'm also disappointed in that yeah. but, but I think what is worth saying and I think the reason why the story's got legs is because Jack is not exactly notorious as Mel know for putting his hand in his pocket and buying her around yeah. Um, <laughs> and because of the popularity that he had, in, or, or indeed a cigarette, he, I, oh. I don't think he's ever bought a cigarette <laughs> packet in his life, but has catched them across the globe. Yeah. Um, but he's, he, because of his popularity in Ireland, he never had to put his hand in his pocket because one of the things the public loved about him, and I think it's that closeness of having lived up there of Geordies and, and Irish people, they are quite, they've got a very similar mentality, which is to go out, enjoy yourself, you want a pint, you want a yeah. pint. And if Jack walked into a bar, he knew he would find somebody who recognised him, especially the size yes. he is, That's and right. say, Jack, do you fancy a pint? Yes. And, that, and he loved yeah. that, and yeah. people loved buying him a drink. Yeah. So I think that um, he, he just, just never had to put his hand in his pocket, it, simple as that. No, he wouldn't have got on too well with a smoking ban either, uh, would he? I mean, I've well, seen him in Dublin that with a with a <coughs> right hand outside the pub door and the left hand inside drinking the Guinness. I Jack saw is, that when I was in Dublin. Jack is probably one of the few people who would be allowed to get away with that. <laughs> Just the same as, he's, I'm I sure. believe, one of the few people in history who has managed to fly from Cork to Dublin and still get duty free. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's in there as well. And I know you're in touch with him. Wish him all the best. Certainly. You know, there's more stories to come, but wish him all the best from all the viewers and all the football supporters in this part of the world. I know that you're in touch with him and he still gets out to the odd, the odd game. It yeah. is. Um, listen, yeah. we're going we're gonna to bring Jack down in the new year to Sheffield. We're going we're gonna to come to Hillsborough. Are you? And, and, yeah, the book's going in the shop. I'm glad to say this week. Um, so we're going to bring him down for a, a signing session, meet the punters. There's been a, a lot of nice social media feedback in yeah. terms of those that have read the book or want to see it. And I, as I said earlier, I think one of the things that really touched me, especially with Owls fans, was just how much of an impact he had on young people that he met. And they would remember the day that they met him in the car park and he yeah, bundled yeah. over and said something daft to them or yeah. invited them into the boardroom unexpectedly. Little things yeah. that Jack did. Just in, as I say, it might have only been someone who met him for five minutes, but they'll remember the day yeah. that, that, uh, that they met Jack Charles. So it's a bit of a book, sign, book signing, books book in the signing, shop. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and Jack. people and, and hopefully do a game and, and he, he, he'd be up for that. We did a couple of signings 
up at the Metro Centre um, near Newcastle yeah. a couple of weeks ago, and he absolutely loved it. He's it's well, still in his element meeting people, yeah. um, and we'll definitely be doing that in the new year. We'll really look forward to that. Jack coming to a Sheffield Wednesday game in the new year. I'm sure you'll be queuing. Yeah. You'll be queuing for I'll the. Be asking, uh, no, I'll be asking for better... forty quid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Waiting in the queue yeah. and then asking in the front. Too much for that. I, I, I reckon you can safely ask him for two hundred and fifty quid a week now. Do you think so? I reckon so. I reckon you get away with it. I think he's still. <laughs> I think he's still told me to. Hundred yeah. percent. Hundred percent. Just write that one down. Just don't say it. Uh, James, over to you, mate. Well, do we? Yeah. Well, with a few Blades fans that have been watching this program, I can't imagine there's been too many. But um, just it's looking, looking to watch. It no, it kicks off in five minutes' time. So, oh, so uh, still watching. Sure, there will be a few Blades fans <laughs> about to um, switch over to watch them play against Coventry in League One, of course, on Sky Sports tonight. A uh, great win last week, four 0 at home to Swindon. Another dominant performance, uh, clinical as well. Uh, next in action on. Boxing Day at Bramall Lane against Oldham. Um, for Sheffield Wednesday, it was a box ticked, one down and one to go in terms of uh, South Yorkshire derbies. Back to back, of course, beat Barnsley 2 0 last week. They've got Rotherham on Saturday at Hillsborough in that second one. Rotherham obviously gasping for points, but you could say probably on the up as well in terms of performances. So, interesting game at Hillsborough on Saturday. Um, Ryan Hindley's Hallam ended that four match losing streak, beating Tevisel at the weekend. They won 4 uh, 2. They're away to the side that beat them at Sandygate a couple of weeks ago. They were away at Grimsby um, at Borough on Saturday. But Sheffield FC, they're now 11 unbeaten. They managed to win a great game um, a, well, um, at home against Gresley last week, 3-2. Uh, they're away at Stamford this Saturday to try and keep that run going. Great run from Jazz Colliver and his side as well. Um, in Rugby Union, uh, Sheffield uh, Rugby Union Football Club, they had their little winning streak, if you like. That came to a, uh, a juddering halt last week against Birmingham. They just dropped a second <coughs> in the league behind Nuneaton. Uh, they play Nuneaton in a few weeks' time, just after Christmas. So that'll be a bit of a six-pointer. I hate using that phrase. I know you hate me using it as well, but oh, it no. could be a, a six-pointer. A bit of cliche, isn't it? Uh, they, right. uh, they play against Broad Street at Abbeydale on Saturday. Um, whilst the Sheffield Tigers in the league above really struggling, seven defeats in a row for them now. Uh, they play against Scunthorpe on Saturday, who are just one place above them, uh, so they've got sort of relegation uh, escape in their minds as well. Uh, the Sheffield Steelers, they had that long road trip last weekend, sort of air miles racking yeah. up. Uh, they play against Cardiff and Belfast yeah. last week. Amazing. Um, they came back bearing no fruit, I'm sad to uh, report. Uh, they lost to Belfast on the Saturday, Cardiff on the Sunday. But they beat Dundee last night at the arena, so that's a good return to winning ways for them. And they've got the chance for redemption against Cardiff on Saturday as well um, at the arena. The Devils have certainly got the Steelers' number. The last four times they've met, they've beat the Steelers every time. Mm. Uh, but Dave Sims in his she Sheffield Telegraph column assures us that that run is soon to come to an end uh, this weekend. That's Saturday. Tip-off 7pm at the arena. Uh, always a great spectacle down there. Uh, now the Sheffield Sharks, they're in BBL action uh, against Leeds Force at the EIS on Friday. It's also going to be shown now live on BBC Two and tip-off is at half past seven. Uh, great investment from the BBC, I think, to be showing that uh, live on, uh, on on a Friday night. Great entertainment, bit of live basketball. Hopefully, give the sp uh, the sport a bit of a boost. And the first game is great to have the Sheffield Sharks on there as well. Uh, big congratulations to Jonathan Rag and the Fullwood Lawn Tennis Club, uh, beating 150 clubs across the county to be named uh, the Yorkshire Club of the Year. Great stuff. Um, and Amir Khan and Kel Brook, could it happen? I know Eddie Hearn's been hinting at a fight potentially in. May time. It'd be great to see that one happen, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Um, and uh, finally, as well, I had a message on Twitter from Curtis Woodhouse. Yeah. Um, he sent me a message asking if we could give him a shout out. He said, I'm delivering presents to the less fortunate for Christmas, but obviously I can't until I get some media attention. Okay. I think that's tongue in cheek, but mm -hmm. I think that you've actually got enough presents this year. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm really joking. Uh, yeah. He was saying that tongue. Think? He was saying that tongue in cheek. I think. Yeah. So, so Curtis is wanting a media shout out for. He, he's playing Santa, is he? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think he, he is. He's uh, delivering uh, presents uh, what, to the less fortunate. I think it's a bit tongue in cheek. I think he's sort of saying, 
you know, if I'm doing these good things, why why do I need to have the media attention? Why can't I just go and do them? I think that's his point that he's making. Yeah. But we'll we'll tell people about it anyway. Absolutely. We so would, there we are. And we would do whatever Curtis Woodhouse wants us to Exactly. He actually <laughs> then sent me a tweet Without because question. I said, well, what would you like me to say? And he said, you know, just tell them how amazing I am and all the look at me, you know, the usual. That's what he said. Done. So there we are. Done. Done, yeah. Curtis. Just would, for you. Yeah, absolutely. Who's to argue <laughs> with him? Thanks very much, James. <laughs> <No worries. laughs> um, I've lost my train. I, I know what it was. Something in the uh, something in the book really struck a chord with me, uh, because I mean, Jack seems to have got, have got friends all over the place, you know, and they're not necessarily people in football. They could be in a, any kind of uh, area of life. And I remember as a kid, my family uh, going to uh, Weymouth one holiday, oh, yeah. 1966, summer of 66, okay, and yeah. unbelievably. Jack Charlton, having just won the World Cup with England, is on the beach with his family enjoying a picnic. So I was one of the boys that were clustered around him, getting his autograph. And he was fine, he didn't say anything. But he wasn't so sort of doing this, and he was just dutifully signing. And honestly, I mean, even in those days, and we're talking a long time ago, he must have been the only World Cup winner prepared to sit on an English beach. <laughs> with, you know, at yeah, at the time, eh? Where everybody recognised him. He, I think his brother-in-law lived in Weymouth. Yes, uh, because that's what he went was, to. Yeah. He went there pre-tournament as well. He spent about a week there. Bobby went to Mallorca yeah. with his missus, and Pat, who was yeah. pregnant, so they couldn't fly abroad. She was pregnant with Peter, yeah. uh, the youngest lad, who they called World Cup Willie, because <laughs> she missed the Pat missed the final, um, and missed sitting next to Sissy because she was so. Heavily pregnant. It's a, I think it's one of the few games that she missed in in Jack's career, ironically. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the the whole family went down to Weymouth for a good a good spell before and after the tournament. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the first things that he basically did was a recce to find out where the local was, yeah. <laughs> so that he'd go sure. running on the beach. I'm sure he did. Find yeah. Yeah. Could yeah. refresh. Maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe a little bit of enjoyment yeah. on the way home. Um, it, and yeah. He had, his, one or two round, he had one or two round here, near Hillsborough, was it the Travellers? Travellers, he used to go into Travellers with Morris Setters, yeah. Tony yeah. Tom's Morris Setters. Yeah. And then there was a place at Barnes they used to go with Arthur Scargill. Red Lion. He, that he was used to go in there regularly. Yeah. And that was the other thing that really oh, struck man. me, Alan, actually, of his time in Yorkshire, was just how him and Pat would do the bit for the miners. And yeah, yeah. They would, they'd, they'd have, uh, I think she said, strawberry and wine parties at the house. Uh, yeah. To raise funds, they gave a great big deep, big freezer to yeah. to to the village, yeah. um, and he lent them the car for, so a few of the lads could get to work and stuff. Yeah. And then when he'd heard one of the lads had had a really serious accident um, down down the pit, Pat and Jack were there to help the family out and do the bit. And yeah. I think that um, that that sounds quite astonishing now, actually, that a, a manager would go out of his way with his wife to do those things for the community, yeah. but. If you were to ask them about it then and ask them about it now, they would just think it's the most normal thing in the world because yeah. that's the way that they are. Very and that's one of the things that I public personally spirit, love yeah. about them. Yeah, public spirited and very, despite everything that he's achieved, very, very down, down to earth still in terms very of his, nice. the way he speaks, his language and everything, <laughs> and everything really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any more tough. stories? Yeah, w uh, just going back to when, when Cole just said, on the training pitch, you know, like, Jack always used to be scrounging cigarettes, you know, because them days, you know, the, the fans used to come and watch you train. And I'll never forget, Brian Ownsby and Jeff Johnson, they were trying this free kick out, and Jack's there on the sideline in his brogues, brogue shoes, and he's smoking away. And these are trying this free kick, and no way could they do it. Oh. And Jack just put the fag down on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Walks onto the training pitch with his, with his brogues on, put the ball down and just bent it round the wall into the top corner. <laughs> and just walked straight back off the training pitch and scrounged another fag off another fan and, and off he went. Fantastic. Yeah. And then there were one once when like I say we were only a young kid and Jeff Johnson had booted the ball over the uh, the onto the River Don. Yeah. And Big Jack picked on me and he said you fetch that ball back here. He said, because if you don't fetch it, you're going to be done 50 quid out of your wages. 
Well, I followed the ball from the training ground, Alan. <laughs> and you know how far the training ground is. From the training ground to the players' entrance, <laughs> all the way down the river. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and there were rats and everything in that yeah. river. But I got the bloody ball. <laughs> I had to get the ball. Yeah. So I was going to get done fifty pounds, and I had to walk back back to the training ground with the mitre size five yeah. and show Jack. And he just well done. He says. There's a great story from Charlie O'Leary, who was the kit man with Ireland in the book. First day, basically, uh, as the kit man. And they've turned up for a training session with the Irish team, and the balls are absolutely hopeless. So Jack basically said to Charlie, really, they're not good enough. Sort yeah. that out. And walked away and left him to it. And so he rang the FAI balls man and just said, these balls, the manager's not having it, the players are kicking off. So you're fine, the ten balls are fine. I'm telling you now, Jack's not happy. So next hour or so, 20 balls turned up. The other 10 are gone. 20 brand new, spanking new balls turned yeah. up. Jack comes out to the, uh, to the training session and basically clocks Charlie and says, there's a man who knows what I need. Yeah. And he was a kit man for 10 years. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, if, if you did your job, oh, yeah. you were in, you were in you. Jack's team. He loved you. I can remember playing against Newcastle and uh, Chrissy Wadd were playing. They were, having, they were taking the mickey out of me. And we're coming, coming at half time, and Big Jack said to me, he said, obviously swearing, getting into my head, and he said, if you don't kick him, you're coming off. Uh, and so I think the first tackle of the second half, I just booted Chrissy Waddle, and uh, I stayed on the pitch. I was brilliant because Jack wanted me to kick Chrissy Waddle because he was taking the arm. Yeah. And but that's how Jack was, you know. Jack was at impressed the that you got close enough to, uh, yeah, to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Because he just used to drop his shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. And well, oh, great player, great footballer, you know. But yeah, Jack, Jack was a, a gentleman. Were you not supposed yeah. to wait until the referee had start, restarted the game, though, Mel? Before you? No, I, I, I tried <laughs> doing it going down the tunnel. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, getting down the tunnel and kicking them. Yeah. yeah. What a great story. Proper days. Absolutely fantastic stories of a different era. Would he? Well, come in funny enough, um, Graham Sooner says no, and I would I would struggle to disagree with with Mr. Sooner. He basically says, and Waddle made the same point because Waddle had a contract disagreement at Newcastle, which was fairly deep yeah. and fairly unpleasant at the time. Yeah. Went to tribunal, fell out with each other, all that sort of stuff, and both of them said he wouldn't survive five minutes in no. the modern game. One. He'd fall out with agents and players, and you can. Yeah. If he's fighting with Terry Curran, what would he be like with some with Terry yeah. Curran's agent? Yeah. Because every player's got an agent now, yeah. from the age of 14 onwards, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. He, and Jack would struggle with that concept, of, yeah. especially yeah. as it would involve his club giving these men a lot money. of money. I don't think he would be happy with yeah, that. A lot of money. Yeah, he, wouldn't, he like wouldn't like that. He wouldn't like. It. He no. wouldn't like the chairman giving the money away either. And no. I think the other thing is foreign investors, boards, shareholders, all that sort of stuff. He wouldn't like them, and I do not think that they would like Jack. And in the modern game, uh, sadly, I think that we would have missed out on one a character and one of the absolute geniuses in the game in terms of making sure that it was played how he wanted. And it's all right saying it was all long ball. It was, but there was a players. there was a method behind it. Good players, in international football. good players got bent result. to it. Yeah. Paul McGrath, exactly. for instance, you know, really good players. Did Paul McGrath was a centre back at yeah. Man United, one of the best and most gifted. Yeah. Yeah. He played in centre midfield for Jack. Yeah. And nobody batted an eyelid, at least of no. all Paul McGrath. Do you know, that's gone. It's gone the whole hour. I just wish we could sit here all night. Well, we might do. I'm really sorry that you've got to, to leave us. Not only leave us tonight, but leave us for uh, 2016, because this show, show's going to have a, a break over Christmas. It's managed to get enough yellow cards to be suspended for the Christmas holiday. Yeah, so we've timed missing it right. the two weeks. We have. Uh, two weeks of repeats. We're back with a live show, I think, on January the 5th. Meantime, thanks so much to James Gregg for his roundup. Absolutely. Colin Young, brilliant book, really, for, really enjoyed yeah. reading it. Thank and you. Mel Sterling, as ever, who we might see again in 2017. It remains for me. Oh, this is going to be repeated. If you missed any of it, do watch it again at 11 p.m. or catch it tonight on my YouTube channel. It just remains for all of us to wish all of you a very merry Christmas. Have a great one. See you again in 2017. See ya. Bye. Bye.